Okay, welcome. My name is Nick from valuespreadsheet.com and this is the very first video I create in which I um, will actually analyze stock, um, a fundamental analysis. I perform a fundamental analysis of a stock each week. I will try to post one of these videos. Uh, so if you have uh, other stocks you want me to um, to analyze, just leave a note in the comments of uh, this YouTube video and I'll see if I can uh, cover that stock next week. Uh, this week I would like to start with one of the most dis often discussed stocks on the market, which is Apple. You see I just filled in the ticker symbol there. It's now retrieving all the data from uh, several data sources like Morningstar and uh, Google Finance. Uh, so this is the result of the analysis actually. So a lot of things have happened behind the scenes. Uh, the result is that Apple scores 81 out of 100, which is a really good score actually. But uh, so why isn't it scoring 100? Well, let's see here it says the return on equity is inconsistent. Um, so let's see what's wrong with it. So if we go to the inputs tab, what, this is actually the tab where a lot of input data is coming in. As you can see, 10 years of ratios. And every year, the, the return on equity has been above 15%, which is actually what I'm usually looking for in a great company. Um, however, in 2004, it was way below 15%. So that's why it's saying return on equity is inconsistent. However, you can see that the last nine years, it has been really, really good. So Apple is actually... A very good company with above average profitability uh, consistently. Um, so something else. Let's let's see what else. Um, the PEG ratio is considered bad in this case. Well, I'm not a huge fan of using PEG ratio, but we can have a look at uh, what's going on there. Let's go to the analysis tab. Um, we see that the PEG ratio is 2.49. Uh, usually, when you're looking for a good PEG ratio, which is the price earnings ratio divided by the growth rate. Uh, usually you want to look for one that is uh, has a value of one or lower. Uh, in this case, it's 2.5 almost, so it's considered bad. Um, it, 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 it could be an indicator that, that, it, that Apple is slightly overvalued. However, we will uh, as I said, the PE ratio is not a huge it's not the best indicator for uh, valuation, in my honest opinion. So we'll have a look at valuation uh, later on. Um, but at least this explains why Apple is not scoring 100. Uh, also, the asset turnover change, uh, which is important because Apple is sort of slowing down. And we can see that if we go to the graphs, um, there are a lot of interesting things we can uh, we can get from these, uh, these these graphs here. So for example, what we see is that the earnings per share have been growing steadily and so have the free cash flow, which is the blue line. Um, but you see that earnings are declining a little bit. Same with return on equity. They have been really profitable. Apple has been really profitable for years and it's been growing its profitability actually, but now it's slowing down. Also, a very important metric here is the book value per share. You see that it's, there was an exponential growth of Apple over the past couple of years. However, now you see that it's slowing down a little bit. And this is logical. I mean, Apple is one of the biggest companies in the world and the law of large numbers applies, right? So at some point you just can't grow as fast anymore because you're getting so big. Um, so, I mean, it's still a healthy growth in book value. However, Apple is slowing down a little bit. Some other interesting things we can see here is that the debt to equity ratio has spiked. Well, spiked, I mean, it's still way below the 0 0.5 I'm usually looking for. Uh, for Apple, it's around 0 0.14 debt to equity ratio. Um, so why did they take on debt? Because they have plenty of cash, actually. Well, the thing is that all that cash, or at least most of it, is located abroad. and if they want to use it, they have to bring it in to the US and then they first have to pay a lot of taxes over it before they can use it. To avoid this, it was actually cheaper to take on some debt and use that debt to uh, actually pay out the dividend. That's why you see that the dividend per share has increased 
and also buyback shares. And you see here in the end of this graph that uh, the total amount of shares outstanding has decreased uh, the last year because they are repurchasing shares. So those are all very interesting metrics. So what, actually what we see here is uh, an amazing company which is highly profitable still, but which is seeing some uh, slow in uh, a slowing growth i mean they're not growing as fast anymore as they used to which is logical because they are just too too big um and so they do something which a mature company does um they return value to their shareholders in the form of a dividend and by buying back shares so apple is actually a really really great company um very strong um fundamentals so let's look if it's also cheap. So what we see here on the dashboard again, there are three valuation models included in this spreadsheet, a PE valuation model, discounted cash flow and return on equity valuation model. They don't all yield the same value because they all use different inputs and an intrinsic value estimate is always an estimate. So it's not no exact science. However, if we just to be, this is actually an override field. So here, it takes the average of these three valuation models. However, um, if we want to be on the conservative side, let's input 122, which is the lowest uh, value. You see here that the numbers change. Uh, now, if you compare the current share price of Apple, which is around $100, to the $122 intrinsic value, um, that means that it's currently 22% undervalued with respect to its intrinsic value, which is good. It means it's, 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 it's not expensive at the moment, Apple, still, despite its enormous uh, yeah, increase in share price over the last year. Um, and this is also an interesting one. This is the expected annual compounding rate of return. And what this tells you, it's a mouthful, but... Uh, if you purchase Apple at the current price, um, then based on this intrinsic value, you can expect to earn around 13% a year for, let's say, the coming five years, which is decent. However, on the input step, I said at the top here that my desired return on investment would be 20% annually. And based on that figure, it calculates the max purchase price for me, which means if I would buy Apple stocks for $75 or lower, I would have a chance of actually earning that 20% a year. And in fact, I purchased Apple at, um, at around $67 a share, uh, which is, I, I had to calculate it in my head because uh, Apple did a stock split, a seven to one stock split. So I purchased it around $450, $475. Then it did a seven to one stock split. So that's approximately $67, $68 I paid. So I'm, I'm well positioned to earn a decent uh, return on this investment. And uh, yeah, so what is the conclusion you can draw from all this? Well, actually what we saw from the graphs and the fundamentals is that Apple is a very strong company above average profitability, low debt levels. Um, they are uh, adding value for shareholders by paying out a dividend and buying back shares. Um, however, they are slowing down a little bit and they are still not too expensive. The stock is still not too expensive, but the return, the return is decent. But if you're really going for a 20% return or higher, then there are better opportunities out there than Apple. So that was it for this week. Again, if you want me to cover any particular stock, please uh, leave a comment under this YouTube video and uh, I might be able to cover it in one of the upcoming episodes of these uh, stock analysis videos. Uh, also subscribe to this channel if you want to receive, uh, be the first to know when one of these analyses is up. And uh, yeah, have a great day.